Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of our Line Fight Zoom chats. Uh, joined tonight here by uh, our uh, usual main man sidekick, uh, Nathan Corbett. And uh, from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, Taylor McClatchy, who will be uh, contending for the inaugural Lion Fight women's lightweight title uh, on April 9th, UFC Fight Pass. She'll be taking on Angela Whitley for that belt. And uh, Taylor, let's get right at it. Uh, you've got this big title fight coming up. Um, tell us a little bit about your training in terms of, uh, have you, are you doing anything different to prepare for Angela being that she, she's you know, fairly experienced, but she's also a larger lightweight. And I think you're coming up in weight to this division. How do you, I guess maybe let's talk about how do you handle your training for competing against a larger rival? Um, so yeah, she's, she's taller than me, which I, I have fought a lot of fights at 125 pounds. So I am generally the taller girl at five, eight, like I'm, I'm, I'm a big 125er. Um, but at lightweight, Angela is bigger than me. Um, so that's, been something just to wrap my head around I've always I've always cut weight to be bigger than my opponent so that's just been different for me she is she is tall though um and she is she's quite experienced um so yeah we're just working a game plan that doesn't involve trying to out strength her right okay I've I've clinched through a lot of my fights I've I've done really well in clinch I have sometimes neglected to do other things because I'm very comfortable there but that may I may get in there that might not be the right answer with someone who has leverage on me. So working on, on a, on a solid outside game plan to, to be very comfortable there, whether or not that's the right answer in the moment, I, I don't really know, but uh, that's, that's really what we're working on is getting really comfortable there. Cause I know I'm comfortable on the inside. And I know I'm strong on the inside. And, and, but also maybe trying to capitalize a little bit on your, uh, you've got pretty long limbs. You got long arms, you got, you got the long legs. So will you try and keep her on the outside? Uh, but, at, but I guess maybe like you said, with the clinch, maybe you do want her to come in tight. Right. That's we'll I usually, 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 you know, right away, you clinch off with someone. You're like, I want to be here. I don't want to be here. Um, but this is really coming at the perfect time because I, I cut up and down between 125 pounds and 150 pounds for several years in a row. And that's never really a good time to, to move up in weight when you're bouncing back and forth between looking like Gollum and not, <laughs> but coming out of COVID, like I'm, I am an appropriate size to fight at lightweight. Like I'm not small. Right. Um, I just. I, I have the size and I have the strength coming off a layoff, like where I, where I lifted weights and I ran and like, we've been training very smart for a fight at a bigger weight. And it, it feels really good to not cut excessive weight. It's pretty great. <laughs> uh, Nathan, uh, I, I'm sure you've uh, had some weight cut, <laughs> some weight cut fun times over the years, but I, so I'm sure you can relate to, to Taylor, but take it away with your questions too. Yeah, hi Taylor. Good to see you. Hello. Um, I've I've got so many questions and so many things to say because I was, you know, I've been, you know, for the last uh, however long, maybe a few years. You know, I've seen you at the line fight with Regan, and Regan was, you know, always saying how you're the number one star in Canada and how she shouldn't even be there. How you should be there. She's ridiculous. And we're always <laughs> and we're always like, oh, how are we going to make this happen? Like, we're going to make this happen. Well, she's you, you, you need to take, you know. So it was, I think it was always meant to be. So when I when I seen that you signed and you're on the poster, I was super excited. Something funny about the poster was, you know, the, the picture with the glasses. And then when I researched your uh, bio, and I'm thinking full time research scientist. Yep. I'm like, it couldn't be the, it couldn't be any more perfect <laughs> to have those glasses in the picture on the poster. If people get to know that about you. So it's something funny. But yeah. going back to more serious stuff about, I always was surprised how much weight you said you used to cut. I mean, we had this conversation. I'm like, yeah. are you kidding me? Like, you know, you're, 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 you're tall and you're strong. And I think this is going to be the most, the, the most exciting and probably one of the best fights of your career because you're going to be, you know, able to be stronger. You had the COVID layoff. You, you built muscle. We actually had one of our other fighters, Jake Peacock, did the same thing over COVID. They built a lot of muscle and feel yeah. even more powerful than before. Um, I don't know much about your opponent at this stage, and I will know a lot more about it over the coming weeks. But with your amateur record, with you know, with fifty-three wins, 
that's a lot of experience. And obviously, that you know, your last five fights, you've won three of them um, as well. So I can imagine you'll be coming in pretty confident, even though it might be someone that in your you know is in, is bigger than what you're used to fighting. You'd have to have a lot of confidence just off the you know off those things alone. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I think it's a different style. Like she has that that long, long athlete style that I I don't get to fight very often. That's usually that's usually my game. Um, so that's different for me. And I know she she's built like a strong girl. So that's again often something that I put on myself. Like I'm going to be bigger and stronger than them. And that, that might not be the case, but I, again, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I have enough experience that nothing that she's going to do is going to be new and nothing that she's going to do is going to be like game changing. I've probably seen it before, whether it's in the gym or in the ring, I have fought other, I have fought at lightweight for a third of my amateur career, actually in a couple pro fights. Um, And sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller, but I've never felt that that was, was a, a detriment to me. So yeah, I'm, I'm really well, excited for the matchup and I, and I feel the best I've ever felt in training, which is blowing my mind right now, but it's, it's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's obviously from not having to, you know, like you said, come down so much weight. Um, I can actually relate to the feeling that you're feeling when I was fighting at cruiserweight, which was 190 pounds. And then I went up to 210 pounds. Um, I noticed that at, at 190, it didn't matter who they were, I, I wasn't really bothered because there wasn't usually anyone that much taller. But when you went up to 210, it could either make them thicker or it could make them taller and thicker. Like there was so much more variety in weight because they could be coming down from 220. And I was walking around that way. So I, I totally understand um, where your mind's at with that. Like, well, this is how I used to be. And now all of a sudden it's going to be like this. Um, so the only thing I would just do is just super encouragement is that, just pull the trigger in the range don't matter you know what i mean just go in there and just pull the trigger and just attack and just go for it and then all of a sudden you shut shut the other person down so that's just my advice in it for you know fighting upper weight class yeah it's, it's a fight course, right it's, it's going to be, you've it's got your be game a fight no matter plan. what yeah it's going to be a fight no matter what i mean you've got your game plan don't need to listen to me but yeah just go in there with the confidence and yeah. Just take the head off. Take the head off. That's it. Just always just take the head off. It's, it's, easy, it's easy to have confidence when training feels good. I go in, I hit five rounds of pads, and I'm not, I'm not sad and crying in a corner because I've had no food that day. Every like I go yes. into the gym and I hit the gym hard and I leave feeling good about whatever it was. And, and that I mean that's different. Yeah, totally. And I mean it must be a lot harder on a female to cut weight because they could not, you know, to cut that much weight emotionally as well would be a lot more difficult than just a male. I've always said that I was really lucky that I was really lucky with that. Some I know some women have a really, really hard time and they just can't do it. And I can't imagine that's for lack of like discipline or effort, right? No. Like I I do the things, I I overtrain frequently. Um, but <laughs> I also I also know the weight eventually comes off. I'm also like a I'm a sweaty girl, man. So like when a lot of women go to sauna off weight, they just it just doesn't come off. They get in the sauna and they just sit there and they get hot and they don't sweat. Whereas I don't have that problem, which is disgusting, <laughs> but a bonus um just quickly like something quirky but um are you are you like is there anything about you that's that's uh that's mad is anything about you that's crazy is anything about you that is like um a little bit wild or have you just like you know pretty mild mild kind of person wild i don't i don't know i think i think fighting is the wild in me (laughs) i'm like uh i'm like a lab nerd and the crazy cat lady all rolled into one that happens to fight people professionally. <laughs> Cause I feel like that's where we need to find your name within the scientists, whether it's mad scientists or like, you know, something like uh, somewhere in that realm of like your profession and your fight, like it's kind of like, you know, yeah, my, it's I think pretty, my it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty unique. Yeah, it, it definitely is. I, sorry, my, my cat is falling off the counter. Currently. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> I'm, he's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I, I work with mice in the lab. People have tried to go for like weird mouse combinations of words and it always gets weird. And we've always just gone back to Tay Tay because it, yeah, 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 yeah. it, it, gets, it gets iffy. Yeah, maybe, so, we just, maybe that's what it is then. Yeah. Taylor, I, 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 you know, we, we have to ask you a little bit about your job because uh, uh, you have probably one of the um, most interesting 
jobs of, of any fighter I've come across. And you, you brought up things like dedication and stuff. But I mean, I think time management must be an incredible gift that you have because uh, your job is uh, you're a research scientist at Ottawa General Hospital. Tell us a little bit about your, uh, what you specialize in and what your uh, sort of uh, career path is like. Okay, so I am, I'm a lab tech at the hospital. So I did my master's in the lab that I'm working in right now. And we study uh, reproductive biology. So we work with mice and we are essentially looking, we, we make mouse babies for a living, essentially. Okay. <laughs> um, we, so I, I work with mice, I get them pregnant and I look at their eggs and embryos to see um, how they develop from like one cell to like the first five days of life. And that's, that's about it. Um, so, so yeah. Well, what's the, what is the end goal of that? Like what, yeah. what, what good or what, what is your work intended to bring to like uh, the, to, to humans, I guess. So, we, so we're like basic science, like this molecule helps the embryo to regulate its cell volume at this stage of life, like very, very basic science at the, at the molecular level. Um, but in theory, if you can understand how eggs and embryos work in, in vivo, in, in, a, in a mouse, you could then start extrapolating to how you would make um, in vitro IVF treatments, assisted reproduction, mimic the, the in vivo environment better. So if you know that the embryo needs this specific thing and why, then you have a reason to start putting it into your IVF dishes when you start culturing pe people, culturing babies. So I'll, 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 I, I failed cutting the frog open. So let, let, I've never done that. Stop there. But uh, I will ask you, if you get down this road, please do not clone Nathan. One Nathan is enough. <laughs> uh, uh, so if you could, you, you know, got, I, you I, got I wish me. you all the luck in the world in your research, but please stop at cloning car, uh, cloning Corbett. One. I stop, only. I stop at mice. Only mice. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that's uh, uh, the, the truth. The truth comes out on these on these uh, yeah, Zoom apparently. chats. At least apparently. I know where I stand. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's just that you're original, Nathan. We can't, we can't copy. Yeah, no, 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 no. Often no, imitated, never duplicated. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Make all the tailors you want. One extra of me is maybe okay, but uh, one Corbett is is good. So. We'll do. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh taylor thank you i know it's super late where you are thank you so much for oh, staying no up late and and joining us and we're really looking forward to you like we've 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 talked so many times uh you as a as a coach and a corner man before it's going to be a, a real treat to see you as the athlete this time and, and in a in a real great spot under the spotlight in the co-main event uh for april 9th taylor mcclatchy against angela whitley for the lion fight women's north american lightweight championship uh, April 9th on UFC Pi UFC Fight Pass, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Taylor, thank you so much. Nathan, thank you. And we will see everybody again shortly on Lion Fight Zoom Chats.